It's no secret there's friction between police officers in the black community, but what has to happen to make it better? Joining me now is Pastor Michael Waters from Abundant Life AME Church in Dallas and Andy Harvey, a former DPD commander who's now the chief of police in Ennis. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, Dr. Waters, I have to ask you, you know, be between the, the peaceful protests and the, the, the looting, uh, what's been your feeling as a whole have these protests made a difference or an impact? Well, we are seeing these protests in light of the words of Dr. King that says that these protests are a sign of those who are unheard seeking to be heard. And we have yet another generation of black and brown Americans who are tired, tired of seeing their brothers and sisters' bodies broken in the streets by those who sworn an oath to protect and serve them. Uh, protests are part of nonviolent direct action, and they are a necessary tool to magnify an issue in the road to justice. Have they made a difference? Sure they have. Thousands of people all across the world have poured into the streets to make a declaration that we cannot continue in this way. The greatest difference, we hope, is that we can ultimately arrive at a change in policy and a national police reform to ensure that we do not have to continue to visit these broken bodies in the days to come. So, so you're looking at this not just at a local city or, or county level, you, you're thinking more national overhaul. Well, we have to. I mean, this is a part of a system uh, of white supremacy uh, that has harmed us for generations. It's very interesting that we're having this dialogue 91 years to the day of the Tulsa massacre where 300 black Americans were killed in the most prosperous community in the whole United States of America. 50 years ago, uh, 60 years ago, uh, this month, a bomb was exploded in South Dallas, uh, creating great harm and redlining. We're only a few years removed from the death of both and John, and the reality is uh, much of our concern today is because of the advent of technology. Everybody is able uh, to film these incidents in real time. But this is nothing new for the black community. As a matter of fact, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., when he gave that address in Washington, D.C., the famous I Have a Dream speech, we often quote the end of that speech, but we fail to recognize the beginning of the speech. Dr. King said black Americans would not be free until we significantly dealt with the stain of police brutality. This is a local, regional, and national issue that we must address. I believe it's one of the great human rights crises of our time. And Chief Harvey, uh, store owners have rights too. How do officers strike a balance between protecting property and, and respecting the rights of, of the protesters? It, it's a difficult thing. Uh, there's nothing easy about uh, being a police officer in a protest or a riot, especially when the looting starts and, and all those violent things that, that we've seen. So there's nothing nothing easy about that. And my heart goes out to all the officers and everybody else out there, not just officers, but everybody down there in every city, uh, voicing their opinion, because they should. Uh, but but it's, a, it's a very um, unsafe place. It can be, and, and that's our concern. But I, I want to make a point, and, and I think this is this is important to note, is that when you think about it, and here's the reality, we have lots of work to do. I agree with Pastor Waters, and he, here's what I believe in my heart. We're not there yet. Uh, but we have to understand in policing that there is a hurt and there is history that, that has led up to this. It wasn't just what happened in Minneapolis. It's the events that have occurred for years and years, just like Pastor Waters said. And, and so we have to understand and, and acknowledge that. And, and understand the hurt. See, right now we're seeing anger and frustration, but underneath that is hurt. We have to understand that. So what do we do in policing? There, there's lots of work to do. Uh, but I do believe uh, uh, that we are on the right track. We're not there yet, but I think we're doing some things that are gonna make us better. And let me just follow up with that and ask you, is it is it hard to know when an officer is coming up through the recruitment process and going through the academy and like that, is it hard to know what's in his or her heart? That is a great question. And we do everything we can to screen uh, officers or, or uh, people that want to become an officer. We do their background and we do everything else. But here's, here's the challenge. 
we have no idea at the end of the day what's in their heart. And that's a very difficult thing. Most officers I know want to do good and want to bless the community and be a part of it and do all those things that we've been working so hard to do. But at the end of the day, there are some cold black hearts and dark hearts that just want don't want to do what we're supposed to do is love and, and care and do all those things that police are supposed to do. So we have some work to do, but again, that, that is a challenge and I'm glad that you brought that up. And Dr. Waters, in your opinion, does this moment feel different than other protests that we've seen over the years? I think there is a unique difference to uh, this protest, primarily because for nearly nine minutes, we heard a man cry out for his mother and cry out for breath and saw the disdain of an officer who killed him slowly with a knee to the throat. Uh, that's an image that is not easily removed from the psyche. That's not a sound that's easily removed from your mind. And at this time, where we're also dealing with the COVID pandemic, where we also have an overrepresentation of black and brown bodies amongst those who are hospitalized and those who are dying, uh, there is a, a, a perfect storm uh, that we are experiencing now. The community is frustrated of seeing a black man take a jog and that ends his life, of seeing a black woman killed while sleeping in her own bed. We're still reeling from the realities here in Dallas of a black man murdered in his own living room while eating ice cream. And, and let's ask the question, uh, we've been told to shelter in place but when officers come into our homes and kill us, home is not safe. And when we dare to go outside, outside is not safe. So the question we must ask ourselves is where is it safe to be black in America? If I go to Starbucks, I'm not welcome. If I take a jog, I'm not welcome. If I'm sleeping in my own dorm room, I'm not welcome. Where is there a safe place for black Americans? And if when I call, those who are sworn to protect and serve me and my community. And that might also end in the loss of my life. Where is it that I might feel safe? Well said. Uh, well, realistically, it's going to take more than the three of us talking for a few minutes to, to enact any real change. But I, I hope this is just the beginning of a conversation that will eventually include a lot more people and bring us all uh, to a better place. Uh, Pastor Waters, Chief Harvey, Thank you both very much for your time and the context you brought tonight. Thank you. Thank you.